Hey there, fellows. So we stumbled upon this concept of a CVT transmission. And why don't we try making a working copy and fitting it to a car? See how it's gonna work. Okay, let's get to it. Check out what we've got here. We've marked up some pipe, put it up into a bunch of strips. We're gonna carefully weld all of them together like so. And we'll wind up with a lovely cone in the end. As for why we're using a pipe to make this, it's all in the name of saving time and material. Okay, so we have welded the cones, and as you can see, we've made life for the lather a lot easier. We've got the cones, and all that's left to do now is to skin them, to make them the exact right size and shape. Let's go. The design of our CVT will be such that one shaft is going to be secured in place, while the other will be moving inside of its guides. Check this out, guys. This is what we've made so far. Here we have those two lovely cones. You'll recall that we've made them out of some pipe. Here we have a few bearings, it's all looking good. Two plates for mounting the whole thing. The whole thing rotates nicely, however... There is still one thing missing. We either need a roller or a belt. We reckon our best bet would be a belt, because it will have a tad more friction surface area than a roller. So we'll find some sort of belt, set up the mechanism that's going to move it around, to be able to change the gear ratio. And then we'll see how the whole thing works, and what sort of torque it can transfer. So check this out. This is coming together interestingly. We've got the belt on there, and now I'd like to try and work out the gear ratios. We make one mark, and another one. So we've marked up the baseline position. And now let's give this a turn, and see how many rotations the first shaft makes to get the second one to make one rotation. So we have the small rotation diameter and the bigger one. This would be the reduction setup. And now take a look at this. One rotation. Two rotations. Three rotations. And let's call that another quarter. So we have a reduction of 3.25 times. And if we slip the belt over to the other side, it'll be the complete opposite and we'll have an overdrive situation. And that is good. Now we need to make the mechanism that's going to move the belt around and uh, change the ratio. The idea is to have the mechanism based on this lovely roller. Whether we can pull it off or not, well, I think we should try and see.
So at first we made a roller for moving the belt around, but once we installed it, we worked out that the belt won't stay in between the ridges. We've made a new roller with more pronounced ridges to keep the belt from slipping out when it gets moved around. The edge is chewing it. We need for it to twist the belt first. Do you see how it's trying to cut it? While it should be like this, our attempt to fit the belt over the roller has failed once again. So now we'll be fitting the roller above it to keep the belt from getting contorted. We'll press some bearings against it. Yet another failed attempt at making a mechanism for moving the belt around. I honestly have no idea what we're going to do. <laughs> Things are not going as planned. One belt snapped, another one was too short, a third one was too long. We've decided to go with a pivoting roller for the second one to move together with the belt. So here's what we've come up with to move around the cart that shifts the belt. This will be screwed into here, the bronze nut will be secured to the cart, and the shaft is going to move the whole thing around. And so here we have the assembled CVT and uh, yeah, I do think this is the final version. We had to redo it like seven times. And now let's see how the whole thing works. Right now it's in the maximum reduction position. And this is how the transmission spins. The drive shaft is rotating much faster than the driven one. But if we shift the belt, which is how a CVT works, well, that's the basic principle. Now look what happens. The revs on the driven shaft are increasing, and quite considerably. Now we just need to fit this thing to a car. Let's do just that and see how it's able to drive. Let's go. So check this out, we've got everything assembled, we're at our favorite straightaway where we test this sort of stuff. We've actually brought this car out here a few times. So let me show you what we've done and how the whole thing is going to work. Well, let's climb inside. Okay, so what do we have in here? It's a lovely system, same as what you saw on the bench, except now it's fitted to a car. We've left the stock gearbox, clutch and all of that. The box is going to set this drive shaft into motion. The driven shaft, meanwhile, is going to spin the prop shaft that goes to the rear axle. It's all simple enough. 
But now we need to check and see how it works. How the reduction and then the overdrive ratio is going to work. It's all straightforward, so let's get to the testing. Let's see how this whole thing is going to work. I am very curious whether it'll even drive in the first place. Clutch, clutch, clutch. Oh, this is terrific! We are moving! Right now the rev count isn't too high. Engine is at a bit over a grand. And the car is slowly moving. Which is quite nice. The nice part is that the car moves at all. But with the help of this electric screwdriver, I suggest we move the roller around. There is going to be a bit of chatter, but no big deal. There we go. And we are picking up some pace. Look at that, this works! And quite well, actually. Well, as it should. This being a CVT, a transmission that should allow us to smoothly increase the speed. Oh, look at it go! And the engine is still turning at a thousand RPM. We are really moving. Though the speedo seems to be giving me an erroneous reading. The transmission works exceptionally well. But to properly register the result, I think we should place a phone over here with a speedo. We have the tack, and I'm going to keep the engine at a constant rev count. Then I'll set off and move the belt throughout its entire range. All the way to the end, to compare the speed that we started with to what we ultimately end up with. I've got the revs where I need them, and now I suggest we try... Not even try, but just set off and drive. Okay, let's go ahead and change the ratio. Upshift, so to speak. Come on now. And there we go. Nine kilometers an hour. Let me keep moving the belt. Some more, I'm seeing 10, 11. And some more, oh, here we go now. There we go. Look at that, just like I told you, the speed is increasing. Significantly. That's it, it won't go any further, and we are at... 27, 28, 29. I mean, that is just... Revs are increasing. The thing is just accelerating on its own. Now we know how the thing accelerates. The transmission works, and the speed increases by about five times. Approximately. It got up from 3 to 24, from 4 to 25 or whatever. So that's all good, but now we need to test it with some additional load. But we all know where the weak point is. And now let's see how much stress that weak point can take. How this is going to work. And whether it'll even last that long. The belt has taken a bit of damage, but it's still doing its thing. Okay, let's go. Okay, that's second. Third gear. And here we go. It is struggling. Oh, and the engine is getting loaded up. Isn't that something? Come on now, come on. Squealing, slipping, come on. Maybe ease off the gas. The screwdriver is struggling now. We've topped out. So much buzzing. 60 kilometers an hour, and I am quite happy with that. Very happy indeed. But what can I say? That's definitely belt I'm smelling. 
Not a lot of smoke, though. But look, you probably heard it yourselves. The belt was slipping like crazy. Which sucks. Well, guys, that's the experiment. We have tested the concept, and it actually works. Even though the belts were slipping, the shafts were getting hot, but no big deal. If the car weighed 200 kilos, this would have been way easier. But at the end of the day, this works, and that is awesome. And the important thing is that we had a clear view. But that's it for this video, catch you guys later.